Life is better for the top 1% of men than it has ever been. But for the other 99% of men, it is worse than it has ever been. You are depressed, lonely, single, and you're not doing what you want to in life right now. You want to improve your life, but you have been mistreated and straight up lied to by society. The truth is the modern world is set up for men just like you to fail. You are shamed just for being a man. And when you try to improve yourself, they call it toxic masculinity. But I believe that the more masculine you become, the more good you do in this world. They don't want guys like you that actually take their life into their own hands and think outside the box, create their own path and do what they want to. So it's much easier to just get you to follow orders and do what you are told. And 99% of men are following that path. Wake up, go to school, get degree, get a job, show up, shut up, drive home, sit in traffic, watch TV, pay your taxes, have a kid, keep your mouth shut, and then hit the age of 65, and then retire. That's when life really starts. Bullshit. We ain't doing this anymore. Society has all these timelines of their own setup for you to follow, because they want you to follow. They want you to be a good little boy. Who's a good little boy, huh? <laughs> and one of the most common things that society tells you is that men and women are the same. But the truth is, men and women are completely different. We have totally different timelines. Women peak a lot earlier than men. But most men never peak at all because they never put in the work that they need to in the first place. And this is because you're being told to do the wrong things at the wrong times. This video is for guys that wanna live in the top 10%, 5%, 1% of life. But in order for you to live that life, you need to do things a little bit differently. Unlike what society tells you, your 20s aren't for partying and messing around. Your 20s are for putting in the hard work so that you have a chance to participate in the male advantage, hitting your peak and prime between age 30 to 45. Now, I'm not gonna lie, boys, my 20s were pretty fun, and I'm still in my 20s, but I got to chase my dreams, get with a bunch of girls, make amazing friends, make money, travel the world, and have some unforgettable experiences. I got to do things that 99% of men will never get to experience, and I am super grateful for that. My name is Denmo, and I was an absolute degenerate. I still am, but I used to be too. But as much as this lifestyle seems fun, I still had to go through anxiety, pain, and depression in all areas of my life. Personal struggles, health struggles, everything in life comes at a price. But I didn't know any better because I was, and still am, a complete retard. Now I'm not even done my 20s yet, and I won't be for a couple of years. Boy oh boy, it has been a wild ride. But here's the thing, I'm actually more excited for my 30s. Because while most of you guys think that you peak in your 20s, the truth is that you have the opportunity to live your best life better than anything you can imagine right now once you hit your 30s. This is a concept that you won't hear in any other places because it's a well-kept secret. You see, society wants men just like you to be good little robots. Go to school, get a nine to five, pay your taxes, apply for a 30 year mortgage, AKA a several hundred thousand dollar loan, get a family and then start to decline. But bro, if you take a chance, think outside the box and play your cards right in your 20s, your 30s are going to be way better. Most people never put all the pieces together or worse, they start to put them together, but they're too old, have too many responsibilities and don't believe in themselves enough to turn things around. I want you guys to imagine all those guys that you see walking around that are miserable, they mess their life up, and they just wish that they could go back in time and do things differently. This video is so that you guys don't have to become that guy. You can do everything right the first time. Now, the reason that I know all this is possible is because I had the opportunity to do all these things. I got to live all these crazy experiences and it wasn't easy. I had to work my ass off. But as much as I think that I've done, looking back, I haven't even scratched the surface for my full potential yet. I'm still a baby, just like you guys watching this right now. If you're under the age of 30, you're a fucking baby, bro. Your entire life is ahead of you. And for my accomplishments, I'm not even talking about superficial stuff like making a bunch of money, banging a bunch of girls, getting a bunch of followers and a blue check mark and all that shit. I'm talking about purpose, bro. I'm talking about waking up every day and doing what you love because you're making a positive impact on the world. This is the lifestyle that you truly would benefit from experiencing, but you just don't know how and you don't believe in yourself. So I've done a decent amount of stuff over the years, but I look up to people that are way ahead of me and have done way more than me. For example, let's talk about a guy like Dave Batista. Batista spent his 20s partying and banging chicks, working in and out at nightclubs as a bouncer. 
Eventually, he auditioned to become a pro wrestler and made a career out of it. He has since transitioned into acting, philanthropy, running businesses, and the dude has even had a professional MMA fight. But before he turned his life around, he probably thought that it was already over. He was 31 years old, he was broke, and his first marriage didn't actually work out. He had two kids and he had just gone through a super nasty divorce. So he had every reason to just call it quits and settle down never move out of that place that he was living and just keep doing what he could paycheck to paycheck but he decided fuck it and he still went for it in his 30s and right now he is 54 years old and coming out one of the most successful career runs of his life he's starring in movies making more money than he ever has but most importantly he's doing what he loves and that is priceless but if he had just given up in his 30s like most of you guys haven't even made it to your 30s to give up yet but are probably thinking that then he would have never reached this level of success if he didn't believe in himself my name is Denmo and my mission is to help you and every other man live the life that they want on their own terms. I'm a bit of an asshole. Some people hate me, some people love me, but I truly want to help you. And in this video, I'm gonna be laying out the concept of the male advantage. So this concept has been around for a while. When I was a kid, I would always hear my dad and my grandpa telling me about a man's prime. There's a book called The Rational Male by Rolo Tomasi that also explores this concept. But only until I discovered a YouTube channel by the name of First Man did I find the perfect way to put it into words. Chris, a friend of mine and arguably one of the only content creators in the self-improvement space that isn't just a grifter trying to sell courses, made a bunch of video essays on the topic of the male advantage. And he even published a book called The Male Advantage. I posted the links in the description below. I highly recommend you guys go and check out his channel. I'm gonna give my own interpretation of the male advantage, combined with my own ideas and the general idea that men and women peak on completely different timelines. This is a tale that is as old as time, but it's only becoming important right now because society is trying to prevent you from finding out about it so that you behave like a good little boy. Because the more dudes like you that watch videos like this, the more you believe in yourself and the more you do what you actually want in life. And that is not good for the matrix. So first, let's start out with you, bro. Very likely to be in the pre-advantage. I like to call this the male opportunity. It's before the male advantage. This is the age of 18 to 25. And for most of us, it's for fucking around and finding out trying different things to see what we like, to see what we're good at, and investing a lot of time to understand how the world works. I remember being 18 and being incredibly depressed. High school wasn't very fun for me. I didn't like the people that I was around. I felt like I had so much more to offer and I was very lonely. I was stuck and I just wanted to get away from my friends and family. I don't know about you, bro. Maybe this video isn't for you. I want to take on the world and I want to become something. I don't want to just be another NPC that lives a meaningless life. So during this time, I was so frustrated. I was in and out of work. I went to school for something I didn't really care about. I was working in the trades, bro. It wasn't good. I was doing landscaping. I was working in chicken factories, slaughtering chickens all day, working as a driller in a couple feet of mud, commuting several hours, working 14 hour days. I even worked as a forest firefighter, traveling around the country, going weeks at a time without internet, just putting out fires. It wasn't until the age of about 22 where I finally kind of did what I wanted to all along, which was start a business about something that I was passionate about. So I ended up starting an automation channel on YouTube. I just did sports highlights, nothing crazy. But I remember that fear of it being summer break, taking a chance for the first time in my life, making money on my own. And then I started a business with a friend of mine. We did property management for student houses, which was disgusting, guys. We were literally scrubbing toilet bowls, getting rid of garbage, tracking down tenants to collect rent. It was greasy as hell. And then I started a YouTube channel where I was doing comedy stuff and it blew the fuck up. I spent years doing these wild comedy videos. I'll save that for another video. But if you're an OG subscriber and you remember my old channel, you know what's up. But if you've never seen any of my old stuff before, I'm gonna leave a link in the description and you're gonna be fucking blown away. Despite all of this success and trying all these different things, I was still going through a bunch of problems. The one that is important for this video is the idea of purpose. Finding something meaningful to do. I did everything that I thought I wanted, that the average guy like you probably would want in life, right? Travel, become famous, make a bunch of money, bang a bunch of chicks, have a bunch of girls slobbing on your knob, people taking photos with you. None of this actually made me happy. I thought that it would, 
but it didn't. And that was terrifying, guys. It's like finding out Santa isn't real. And it coincidentally happened during the pandemic. And I also had some other shit happen in my life, which I'll tell you guys about in the future. But it forced me to become very introspective and really deeply look into myself and ask questions like, do you like what you're doing? Is there a reason that you're doing this? Is there a purpose? And what's the point if things are going to go downhill in a couple of years after 30 anyways? I was like you. I thought that men peaked in their 20s, just like women do, and then things go downhill. And that made me feel awful. I was like, wow, I already did everything and I'm not even 30 yet. So after really thinking about it, I set some big goals. I'm not talking bullshit goals, guys. This video isn't for dudes with bullshit goals. This is for dudes with big fucking goals. Two year, five year, 10 year, 20 year goals. Pulling a Batista, basically. But once you set goals this big, it forces you back in the work mode. So you actually have to keep a low profile for a while. You can't go out as much. You can't be spending a bunch of time on social media, letting people know what you're up to all the time. You just gotta fuck off from everybody and put the hard work in up front. And this is a great place to be. This is where I am right now. And this is hopefully where you are right now watching this video. Grind mode, monk mode, ghost mode, den mode. This is what happens when you're between the age of 25 to 30. It's where you've had enough experiences that you know what you want and you can narrow your focus onto one path and work as hard as you can towards it. Assuming you played 18 to 25 right, you've already graduated school, you've already worked part-time, full-time, you've already done a bunch of stuff, and most importantly, you understand yourself better because you're a mature adult, you're 25. So if you're under 25 and watching this right now, don't even worry, bro, you're still basically retarded. I was literally retarded till I was 25 years old, and I'm not ashamed to say it. This is like miserable because while everybody else is going out, partying, you're at home working, doing boring, mundane shit all day. You don't get instant gratification. You're not settling down into a relationship, getting a nice car, getting a mortgage, aka a 30-year loan with the bank. You're not posting pictures on Facebook, getting ice cream and shit. It's tough, man. And that's where I am right now, bro. So I totally feel you. And the reason I'm working so hard right now is because in a couple years at 30 is when life really begins for men. The male advantage, where all of your hard work is starting to pay off or all of the bad decisions, poor choices, and mistakes that you've made are starting to show how fucked up your life is. This is when most dudes literally start to give up and quit. They settle down, they call it a day, they throw in the towel. It begins around 25 to 30, but it's very slow and hard to notice. But after 30, you see it everywhere. And it's like socially acceptable for dudes to just give up, drop off and decline because everybody else is doing it. It's like this weird thing that everybody else is okay with. And I think the biggest reason is because men don't understand that women peak in their 20s. Men actually peak later in life. It's very tough for men to have success when it comes to dating, status, etc. But if you're a woman and you're at least decent looking, your 20s are very easy for you. Everybody loves you, everybody wants to hang out with you, every man wants to date you, and you just get access to all of these things that a man never gets to experience. An average looking woman gets more compliments in a week than a man does in an entire decade. But after 30, the tables turn, and women know this, which is why they start sniping dudes as they get closer to 30 or between the age of 30 to 45, because these are guys that are now making money, their body's in good shape, they do something that they love and they are finally reaching their peak. Whereas women know that they're getting closer to 30 and they're gonna have less and less dating options every single year. And this doesn't mean a woman's value as a person. I'm just talking dating value. How many options that women have and how high quality those options are compared to when she was younger in her 20s. But if you fuck up 18 to 30, then you're gonna completely miss this window. You're gonna have less time, less energy, and you're gonna not believe in yourself as much. You're gonna have such a strong sense of urgency and stress that it'll be so much harder for you to take advantage of this. So let's assume you got through 18 to 30 and you did everything right. This is what your 30s and early 40s will look like. You have come very close to mastering a specific skill and you have five to 10 years of experience. There's something called a 10,000 hour rule, which basically takes daily practice for about three to five years, depending on the pace that you work at. So after 18 to 25, when you're fucking around, you really, really narrow down on that skill and put a solid five to 10 years in on it. And at that point, now you're in your 30s and you are basically at a master level in this skill. Now, obviously throughout the rest of your life, you're gonna continue to improve, but as of right now, in that niche specifically, whether it's like trades, engineering, finance, law, entrepreneurship, you are the cream of the crop. You are really good at a high fucking level. This means that you're not replaceable anymore. You have so much skill and value 
that a company can't just fire you and hire somebody else to do the exact same thing as you. You are very unique, especially if you go into a specific niche, which makes you super valuable, both to employees and companies, but also to society, also to women, also to friends around you. Your personality is developed, your skills, your connections, your perspective on things. You ever notice how old people are so set in their ways? It's a good thing and it's also a bad thing. It's because they have matured into what they are. And if you're a good character, it's a fucking great thing. Now, because of this skill and hard work that you put up front, you are now making a very high income. We're talking top one to 5% of men, easily over two to $300,000 per year. And this is on top of all the money that you've saved up over the last 10 years. While everybody else was going out buying brand new trucks for like $60,000 or putting down payments on houses that are gonna take them 30 years, all that hours of work and money that you invested is now in your bank account. Because of that, you can actually reinvest into starting a business or switching into pursuing a passion. For example, if you wanted to start a YouTube channel or become a musician, now at the age of 30 or 35, you have all this money that you've saved up, all this skill, that you can get paid high for, now you can take a risk that you couldn't when you were younger. Most people think that entrepreneurs start at around the age of 20 or 21. That's a fucking lie. The average age for an entrepreneur is a guy that's usually about 40, 41, because he got that skill, worked in the industry for a bunch of years, so he learned everything about it, has a bunch of money saved up, is currently making a bunch of money, and most importantly, knows how to be a man, social, charismatic, talk to people, make connections, and he has a huge network of people. So all of a sudden he finally has the resources that it takes to successfully launch a business. Now I'm not saying that you shouldn't launch a business in your 20s, bro. I did, I launched a couple. Some of them worked, some of them weren't so good, and some of them really paid off. The point I'm making is, I don't want you to burn out and fail and then give up, when in reality, it actually gets a lot easier as you enter the male advantage because you have so much more to offer. And at this point, you are smart enough to take care of your body. I used to be awful. I would just eat junk food all the time. We're talking like sugar, candy, chocolate, pizza every single day. And I'm a diabetic, so that's a very bad idea. <laughs> but I was so frustrated that I couldn't gain weight. Everything that I ate, I would just piss out all the proteins. I'd work out all the time, and then I would literally still not gain weight. And this was my vice. It wasn't just to gain weight. It was because when I was a kid, that's what I did when I was sad. I just ate a bunch. So you'd think I'd be a huge fuck, right? Well, you can thank diabetes that I'm not. But it took me years to start really dialing in on my nutrition, starting to track my calories and exercising regularly. And I'm not the most juicy guy ever, but I'm gonna be getting bigger and bigger as my metabolism slows down and I really start to niche in on this part of my life. It'll be a lot easier to gain weight as you get older, but you can also afford personal trainers, a cook, a dietitian, a nutritionist, this is all stuff that takes up a lot of your time. And I feel for you guys that are grinding on a business and because of that, your health is taking a back seat. You should at least work out a couple days a week, but I know what it's like to only do the bare minimum physically just so that you can get ahead. And that's understandable, but by your mid thirties, your body is usually totally dialed in. All the guys that are going out with girls in their twenties when they're in their thirties, it's not just because they're 33 or 34. Plenty of 33, 36 year old dudes look like total fucking shit. But the guys that actually take their health seriously, they look amazing. They look like they're in their 20s still. A couple gray hairs in the beard here and there, but that's exactly what girls want. They want a guy that still looks good, but has the experience and the assets. That's why you see all these dudes crushing it are in great shape in their 30s. Now in your 20s, naturally, you're gonna bang some chicks, go on some dates, some more than others, but by the age of 30, you're actually gonna be confident in your own abilities. You mature, you know what works, you know what doesn't work. You've invested in mentors or courses. For example, I spent years approaching girls in real life for my YouTube channel and I put all the videos online and then I took them, everything I learned, all the secrets about dating and attracting girls and I put it all together in one course. And if you're interested in that, there's a free 35 minute video where I teach you the basic framework of approaching girls in real life, attracting them. I even share my number one best opening line. So check that out. The link is in the description below. But as you get older, you start to realize that courses like this exist in whatever you want to get better at. So I got really good at talking to girls and now that's something that people pay me a bunch of money 
to help solve the problem for them. Lawyers are another good example. A good lawyer costs hundreds of dollars per hour. Tradesmen, plumbers, because if somebody can solve your problem that quick and efficiently, it saves you so much time and energy. So by your 30s, you've already invested in a course on dating, social skills, attracting, talking to girls, approaching them in real life, as well as business courses, and you've read a bunch of books. So you have all this knowledge. You might not think much about it now, bro, but when you're going to the gym and it's late at night, instead of scrolling on your phone or listening to music, Put on a couple audiobooks, put on some podcasts where you can actually learn something. Because over time, you're going to rip through a bunch of courses and books and you're going to have so much knowledge. But most importantly, you've went out and you've executed. And since you've gone out there into the real world, you've tried, you've failed, but you've had some successes. And the memory of those successes is what gives you confidence. You know that you can do it because you've done it in the past. You're also going to have a lot of career momentum. Because assuming you've put in the last five to 10 years working towards something, you are now deep into that industry and each year you get a little bit better. Now, most athletes slow down towards their 30s, but in the UFC, the average age of champions is usually between the age of 31 to 36. Even though there's young, hungry guys that are in their 20s and they are super powerful, they don't have the technique, they don't have the experience. They just haven't been around long enough. And they do start to slow down in their late 30s, especially at the lighter weight classes. But besides this example, a great example is Hollywood, actors and musicians. All of the guys getting lead roles in movies, TV series, documentaries are all guys in their late 30s, early 40s. Because the typical male action hero can't be a dude in his 20s. That's too young. He looks young. He doesn't know anything yet. We don't believe that he can be a hero during a crisis. You need a man that's been around and done some shit. And a man hasn't been around and done some shit until he's in his 30s. Lead roles, hero roles, a guy that could be a father, a guy that has years of experience in a specific industry. We just take people more seriously when they're in their 30s or 40s. And business reflects that. This is when a man begins to earn the most money of his life. The next thing that's great is that every woman wants to fuck you. Now, if you set up your life the right way, every woman could want to fuck you in your 20s. But most of you guys haven't done that. And most of you guys probably would be better off not doing that because long term, it's not going to be sustainable. But now that you have all these things I've just laid out here, you have a high paying skill, career, niche. You have a bunch of money saved up. Your body's in good condition. You're smart. You're mature. You got confidence, charisma and experience with women. You are a fucking catch. Every woman wants a man that has his life together. There's a famous saying, women wait at the finish line and they fuck the winners. Who cares if you have an idea? They want the guy that's already accomplished everything. And if you take care of your body, you're still going to look like you're in your 20s. And this was a hard pill to swallow for me because when I was like 18, 19, 20, I was like, why are all the girls my age banging dudes that are in their 30s? That's weird. That's gross. But now towards the end of my 20s, I'm like, oh, I get it now. It makes total sense. Women hate this. They actually shame men that date women in their 20s once women get to their 30s. And that's because all the women in their 20s that dated the wrong guy, the fuckboy, the player, the chad, that left them, now all the good guys that they didn't want to date are leveling up in life, they're hitting the male advantage, and they're dating beautiful women in their 20s. So all of a sudden these women are like, oh, that's awful, you should be dating women your own age. No, you ignored these guys until they were the only option you had. And that's not a shot at women, it's just, again, men and women are on a different timeline. And this is only when it comes to dating guys. It is not a human's value, it's just dating. Now, something that you're also going to notice is that you're going to lose contact with a lot of your close friends. This is a natural part of life. Every couple of years, we start new social circles. But a lot of the people that you went to high school with or college with, they went down the traditional fuck around and then settle down at 30. They start to decline. So it's going to hit you really hard when you're living a completely different life. All of a sudden, you're not even going to have the same problems that other friends do. While they were out partying, messing around and shit like that, thinking, hey, I got to get it out of my system now because when I'm older, I'm not going to have as much fun. Dudes like you and me, we're putting in all the fucking work and grinding instead of going out so that we can make more money later on. Now, money isn't the best example, but it's also decisions. Guys are going to find way more vices. They're going to be playing video games. They're not going to be eating very healthy food. The metabolism speeds up, right? So they're going to be getting fat and they're going to settle down with chicks, not because that's the best chick for them, but because they're lonely. And instead of fixing these problems, they're like, ah, oh, I'll just get a girlfriend. And then you're going to see dudes in their 30s that are like miserable. And it's like they're in a completely different state of life than you. They actually look older than you do. 
and it's gonna really hurt you because obviously you want your bros to succeed. You want them to do stuff with you, which is why I highly encourage you guys to help your bros out and make sure that they get to the same level as you do if you can. Next bro, your family members are gonna start to pass away. This is a sad fact of life, but it's true. So some people, they lose family members sooner than others. I lost my mom just a year ago in my 20s. And most guys probably won't lose their family members till they're like in their 30s. But as they get older, you're going to have to start to handle them not being as sharp as they used to be, you know, putting them in old age homes or moving them in with your house so that you can take care of them. Funerals, taxes, all that stuff. So you're basically going to slowly become a man. And I know this sounds blunt, bro, but your parents are going to die one day. And I know you don't think you can take it right now, but when they do, all of a sudden, you're going to have to be strong enough to handle it. And when you do go through that, it's going to be painful. But all of a sudden, you're going to be like, holy shit, I'm a man now. I had to deal with this and I was okay. And that's just family death, bro. There's also going to be a bunch of shit along the way. People are going to come after you. They're going to try and fuck your life up. There's a million different ways they can do it. But when a man starts to succeed in something, he becomes a target. Remember that. Always be careful about who you associate with. Now, at this point, let's say you're about 35. You have a very unique choice right now where you can decide to cash in your chips and settle down. Let's say you have a couple mil in the bank or even just one or two mil. You're doing good relative to where you live. You have a job you love or a business you love, a passion project's taking off. You're charismatic. You're in good shape. You're killing it. And then a baddie 23 year old comes in and she's like i love you let's settle down she's gonna be everything that you ever wanted in a woman she's got a low body count she's conservative she doesn't have social media you're gonna be like oh yeah it's time and she's gonna be a lot hotter than the girls that you used to date and bang because you're at a higher level now that's what you guys always forget you think that okay well i got a couple decent looking girls in the past but i've like hit my limit you know it's on the decline now as you level up and go through the male advantage, you'll be able to attract girls that didn't even fucking look at you in your 20s. Now, if you do blow up on social media in your 20s, it's a little bit different. You can bang a lot of thoughts. But the point is you have a choice now of settling down, starting a family, raising some kids, if that's what you wanna do. And what's cool is you have enough of a head start that it'll be a lot easier to provide for your kids, put them in school, pay for the university or whatever, get a house and all that. But you have the choice now to do this or keep it going. Just milk that shit. And things will stay this speed until about the age of 40. At 40, naturally, things are gonna start to decline a little bit. You probably are gonna have way more money, way more connections. You'll probably be way more famous. But at the same time, you got a couple guys that are 30 to 35 and they're not as rich as you. They're not as famous as you, but they are a little bit younger. And there's always gonna be this thing where you want somebody that's a little bit closer in age to you so instead of it being a 40 year old and a 23 year old, a 23 year old would probably prefer like a 30 year old, a 35 year old, if they look the same, they're in the same shape and all that. And it varies by culture, right? It's all up to you and what you want. Some girls, they love dudes, even if they're in their forties. Like think about Ryan Gosling, Chris Hemsworth, even Leo, great example. They're still pumping supermodels in their twenties and they played the fame game, okay? There's dudes that are richer, probably a little better looking than them, but there's no way they could pull like a celebrity can. The difference is though, there's gonna be a lot of guys in their 30s that are ugly, awkward, look like total dorks and they have money. These guys aren't gonna do as good because every girl is just gonna use them for their money. So they're gonna have a big target on their back. A good exception to this would be comedians. Comedians are never meant to be that good looking in the first place. And a lot of the time they make people fall in love with them because of how funny they are. So if you're not the best looking guy, make a little bit of money but become really good at something, you know, maybe being funny, being creative, being an artist, and you won't attract the most girls, but the girls in your niche or that consider you your type, you will be able to dominate there. And that's what's cool about this age, guys, because once you have the time, money, energy, resources, and confidence, you can decide, all right, well, I want to get really good at this now. I want to dominate this. As soon as they hit 30, a lot of guys are just way less interested. They'd rather bang the chick that's age 20, 25, 26 that has way less baggage, way less body count, and is much more like agreeable. And what's crazy is now that you've optimized all your money, your career, your purpose, your body, even though you're starting to get a little older, have a little bit less energy, your age is showing, you actually have more time than you did in your 20s because now you're getting paid more than you did with less hours of work, which means that you can actually afford to start automating things. For example, once you've reached the male advantage in your 30s, 
you shouldn't be cooking unless it's something you do for fun. Like, yeah, once a week, cook, spend an hour in the kitchen. But realistically, breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, all of that is pre-made, pre-cooked, pre-paid for, given to you. You don't have to wash dishes. All of that is done because you just don't have time for that. Your ability to do what you want is so much more important than things that you don't need to be doing. Cleaning your toilet, like these are all things that you don't need to do anymore. So it actually frees up all this time. Your energy and time is so precious. So you only put it in the right places. Now things start to decline at about 50, again, unless you're Batista, right? Dude's crushing it at 54. I thought he was like 40, man. I was blown away when I saw this guy. But realistically, yeah, now women are going to start to prefer the dudes that are peaking in their 30s or 40s as opposed to your 50s. But dude, you had one hell of a run and you could keep it going, but it's just going to be less likely for you to find a 25 year old you could pump kids into when you're in your 50s. All right. So listen, boys, I hope this video fired you the fuck up because I want you to know that you're not alone. I'm an absolute maniac just like you. Everybody else that watched this video is also a maniac like you. I have a Discord group that is over 16,000 men strong, and we have a brotherhood of other guys that are working towards the male advantage, improving their life in every single way, getting girls, making friends, finance, starting businesses. Everybody's helping out each other, and we're keeping each other accountable, motivating each other every single day. So since you made it to the end of this video, I invite you to join our Discord group, join our brotherhood. It's totally free. Links in the description below. Join the challenge with us. Get on monk mode and start working towards your goals. And if you are a guy that's experiencing the male advantage right now, you're in your 30s, you're making good money and you want to level up your dating life, I do one-on-one -on -one private coaching for dudes that are crushing it, making a fuck ton of money, and now they wanna really dial in their dating results. So you can book a call with me by clicking the link in the description below. I also highly recommend you guys check out First Man, and Rich Cooper, AKA Entrepreneurs in Cars. He's done a lot of similar videos to this as well. The next video to watch after this is going to appear on the screen right there. If you like this video, you're gonna fucking love this one. So strap up your seatbelt and click play. I'll see you in there.